you can have billions of dollars. And if your time is consumed in your work, the money, what no does reason. the money actually do for you? Exactly. It's not doing anything. Welcome to the Royal Flush Podcast. My name is John Overy, the VP of Sales here at Royal Flush. In this podcast, we cover the ever-growing ins and outs of our state-of-the-art pipelining company. And specific to this episode, we cover the old cliche of don't burning the candle on both ends. Kyle and I cover a lot of topics dealing with millennials in 2023, corporate burnout. I think you're going to really enjoy the conversation. We cover a whole bunch of topics that I think people can really relate to. Have a listen. Hope and enjoy. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Royal Flush Podcast. I'm Kyle McShane, here with John Overy. And uh, this episode's topic was inspired by a another cliche phrase. Mm-hmm. That was We're on a cliche binge. A binge. For topics. Yep. Uh, I was actually recommended to you, and the phrase was, um, don't burn the candle at both ends. Mm-hmm. Um, so at first, I didn't You didn't know. even know what that means because you're know. so young. <laughs> um, so I guess, can I just walk me through your definition of that phrase and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. So to me, don't burn the candle on both ends means doing way too many things in a short or small period of time and just taking on a significant amount at once. Mm -hmm. And if I had to simplify it, it would mean, and I think the context what we're going to talk about would be um, overworking you know, working your regular day, going home and eating, and then hopping on that computer and doing five more hours till 11 o'clock at night, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're waking up, you're working, you're doing your thing, you spend a little bit of time with your family, you're back working, right? There's no time to decompress, relax. You're in, you've heard me use that term before, rat race. You're just continually spinning that wheel over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what that means to me. And I think we're going to take the conversation in a lot of different ways, but um, I think it's something that, uh, can be easily fallen into because we're so focused on being productive and, um, you know, today's society is, uh, you know, somebody's always doing better than you. Mm. And social media is terrible, <laughs> uh, even though all we do is social media. Yep. Um, but you can really get stuck in a rut of continuing to, uh, you know, if you've, if you've got a fire going on one end and a fire going on the other, they're going to meet in the middle and yep. there's going to be nothing left. To me, that's what the the definition of that word means. Okay. Yeah, kind of just you're burning mm-hmm. twice as fast. Yep. Um, so that kind of almost contradicts what we talked about last episode as far as when you were talking about take off the biggest bites you can take. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you're right. That is technically contradictory to... Uh, Don't bite off more than you can chew, Mm -hmm. right? But I think my context for that, if you certainly listen to that episode, is I want, I encourage people to take off the biggest bites they can and challenge them within your normal workday, right? We were talking about it in a a business environment or Mm -hmm. certainly maybe a personal environment you're trying to achieve a goal. There's no need, that big bite doesn't need to be over the 16 hours that you're awake in a day, right? Mm -hmm. Take that big bite with those tasks that we talked about and do those in your eight-hour workday. Then when you're done with work, you leave those tasks in that bite here. Mm-hmm. Burning at both ends is, is a complete no separation. It's something I battle with because, I mean, there is no separation for Royal Flush for me. Right? Yeah, this that's is, true. This is my family's business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I am taking calls all the time, talking with people all the time. So it's something I struggle with. But still, there is decompression time and family time and activity time and project time. Um, and I still love it. So, you know, mm. there is almost no two ends for me. It's actually a conversation. So I've thought about that, but it's, I don't think it's anything we've ever really talked about. What's that like? Kind of just like almost always being on the clock. Like mm. if you're spending family time, you're yeah. with your coworkers, you're with your boss. Like that's a great way. Of d- um, so it's, uh, it's interesting. Kyle. So let's talk, Let's talk about the family aspect. So, for instance, this past weekend, um, we went to Jim and Janice's house Mm -hmm. and we carved pumpkins with the kids, right? So, that was, was it, was it, it was Friday night? No, it was Sunday. I, so I see Mark Monday through Friday, 
Mm-hmm. I see Jim and Janice almost every single day. Sometimes they pick up my kids for me. And I saw Mock earlier on Sunday who helped me with the dumpster mm-hmm. for throwing out some trash at my mom's house. And then I spent five hours with them at their house at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just say I think the best thing is that I have a phenomenal relationship with them. And so... Yeah, that definitely helps. You know, there is... You know, there is... There is no overconsumption yeah. when it's people that you love and that you like spending time with. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's times where I want to punch Mark in the face. <laughs> he, he wants to do right. There's times when I'm frustrated with him. He's frustrated yeah. with me. There's time that Jim drives me bananas. But that's just, I mean, right? I, I think of it, it's just like a relationship with your parents, right? Like, mm-hmm. do you, have you ever been like, are you sick and tired of seeing your parents? Hopefully yeah. you have a great relationship with them. There's times where you're like... Dad, leave me alone, right? <laughs> yeah. But there's other time you're like, I'll, I'll hang out with you every minute of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when you, when you love the people and you guys, what we, the interesting thing is what we have is this incredible common bond of royal flesh. Yep. Right? And then we have this incredible bond of, you know, we'll just talk to Jim and Janice, the owners of our company. You know, they're the, the parents of the woman I love more than anything in the world. Mm-hmm. They worship the ground my grandkids work, work on. So it's like... You know, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic. But of course, there's times where I'm like, I'm like, nope, I need, I can't see him. I can't, I can't talk to Mark <laughs> today. I can't see Jim and Janice. That's just again, just normal yeah, human things. But no, there's there. I I would say I, I'm very lucky, for me personally, and f- certainly for all of them, that we are not burned out from each other under any circumstance. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because. We have those commonalities of, and we all we had we had these strong relationships before I started working here. So I'm I think sure, the yep. real key is the foundation in the relationships between myself, Jim and Janice, were, and Mark, were set in nothing to do with Royal Flush, nothing to do with business. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they were set for like fifteen or twenty years. Mm-hmm. No, we always talked about our the business because. It was their lives. Yep. But then when I joined the company, we've now built what I like to think is a skyscraper on top of the foundation. So mm. it's it's perfectly balanced. Yeah. I just I, I asked that question because I feel like it's definitely unique, like a family business. Mm-hmm. It's a unique situation where, you know, you talk about work life balance. Yeah. You're doing your eight hours of work a day, mm-hmm. and then you go home. You know, you know, family dinner. Yep. Holidays. Oh yeah, Jim and Janice come over the house all the time with the kids. I like, yep. hang out with like. We see them all the time, mm-hmm. yeah, all the time. Definitely a unique. So, do you find yourself, I guess, you know, Royal Flush has become a part of your mm-hmm. everyday life, and you kind of talk about getting your work done in your eight hours, and then mm-hmm. when you're off for the other eight hours when you're awake, it's kind of just like your you time. Yeah. So I, w- it's, you know, this company now is in my DNA. Yep. And so it's of course that's the easy topic to go to, but we, mm-hmm. you know, we hang out and talk about. It all kinds of other stuff too. Yeah. You know, so it, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if Jim and Janice come over for dinner tonight and it's six o'clock, you know, the first thing we're going to talk about is the kids. Yep. Right. What's going on? What's Connor doing? What's Lola doing? And, you know, Janice is smothering Lola because she loves her so much. <laughs> um, and, you know, and then of course, you know, Jim and I will always just naturally kind of, you know, pull away and just talk about whatever. But then it goes back to, you know, what are you doing? I've got the project on the garage and Jim's helping with that. Mm. And they're picking up the kids for me so I can do something. And we're talking about what Jade did today. Mm. And we're planning. So this, you probably know this. So my wife's 40th birthday is in January. Okay. And we're going to the Dominican and Jim and Janice are coming with us. Hmm. Jade, happy early birthday if you're watching so this. We go on vacation together too. Yep. And, uh, you know, they're going to help us with the kids. But obviously, we've gone on vacation with them numerous times. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. Vacation, Janice, great time. Really? Oh, yeah. Huh. She's amazing. I mean, she's obviously great all the time. But Party vacation, animal? Janice, is a good time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like we're going on vacation with them. Yep. It's just, it's a really, really great relationship. Yeah, like I said, I just think it's a very unique situation. And, you know, um, so when you, like, so do you experience... Maybe not necessarily related to that, but do you experience the candle burning at both ends from time um, to time? And yes, of course, from time to time, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, well, I'll say, you know, the one end for the, the work day is fine. I can handle and manage that. The area that I struggle with is 
um, you know, picking up the kids and my wife coming home and doing that and then still wanting. I, what I struggle with is, is wanting the time to still focus on Royal Flush because there's things I need to do, but just truly not being able to dedicate the time. Mm-hmm. So I have, I have to not do it because I can't. Yeah. There's just no time to do it. I would love certain days to burn it on both ends. Mm. But there's so much going on with my young family that I can't do it. So there's there's yeah. a, a mandatory separation of the other end being turned off. Okay. It has to be because there's just not enough time and hours in the day. Yeah. So yeah, there's days where I get home where like I, I want to follow up on six phone calls and send out three estimates and talk with this customer and, and close a deal and get something on the schedule and work it out a logistic, but I just, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. So wait till the next day. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where it's like, that's a clear non-negotiable yep. necessary priority. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of where you prioritize. Like I'm fortunate enough. I'm 24 years old. I don't have many responsibilities to mm-hmm. tend to, you know what I mean? So I put my eight hours in and I go home, spend that time, not necessarily how I have to in a non-negotiable way, mm-hmm. but almost as I want to. Yep. And you mentioned um, the other day, kind of to the to the effect of burning the candle from both ends, mm-hmm. is um, you had mentioned if both options were on the table and it was, hey, we'll give you an X amount of dollar raise and or, you know, X amount of extra vacation days. Yeah you nine times out of 10 are taking the vacation days. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's delve into that. So I think that we can take this topic to a, um, <clears throat> generational, what motivates people, how, um, what they value a little bit of the gen X, gen, gen Z, which is okay. kind of you mm-hmm. and maybe like some corporate burnout stuff, which I think is a cool topic that I want to cover. And so what I've been saying recently is, if you took 10 people in whatever dollar amount they make, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and you said, listen, I have two options for you. Option A is I will give you a $5,000 raise. Okay. Or option B is I will give you four additional vacation years on top of what you had last year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, probably the value of the four days is not worth $5,000. Technically. Yep. I mean, depending on what you do, hopefully you make a lot of money or as much as you can. Yeah. And maybe it is $5,000 for four days. but More times than not. Uh, um, not. And I truly believe in today's society and world, seven out of those 10 people will take the vacation time over the increase in pay. I truly, truly believe that. Mm-hmm. Because I think people, and I like to think people value their time to do things that they want to do and their experiences more than they do the actual tangible dollar amount. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, and I think we've talked about it before on a previous episode, but you you use your time to make money mm-hmm. and then you make the money to use your time how you want. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely see your point as far as um, using that more allotted time than money mm-hmm. because... You know, if you if you're perpetually working, you know, five days a week, fifty two weeks a year, you have the money, but you don't get to yeah, yeah, you don't get to spend the time. Yeah, what are you gonna do with it? Exactly. Yeah. There's nothing you to can do have with. as you can have billions of dollars, mm-hmm. and if your time is consumed and engrossed in your work, mm-hmm. the money. There's what no does reason. the money actually do for you? Exactly. It's not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Right. So I said to you the other day, I said, Kyle, if we didn't pay you any money, it was free. Would you work here? <laughs> Absolutely. Love you guys. No. Absolutely. Not. Right. Yep. I wouldn't work here for free. Mm-hmm. It's my family business. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> we we work to gather money mm-hmm. to fulfill a lifestyle that we feel appropriate with and to do things that we enjoy. Yep. That's the simple way. Right. That's mm-hmm. that's why people work. And honestly, on paper, it might sound terrible to say. Like if you if if I just said. John, no chance I work here for free. Obviously, you have your, you know, opinion on it, mindset on it. But it might sound kind of shitty. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, that's what we show up to work every day for. Is yep. To make money to fund a certain lifestyle we want. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so then you talked about 
the prioritization amongst different generations. Mm. What do you what do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I got a lot of questions for you on that. Okay. And so, <clears throat> um, okay, we talk about burning on both ends, right? There is a, a, a large stigma, Kyle, around people of your age. There definitely is. Right? Men, women, them, they, whoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, college and what they value and prioritize. Yep. What their work ethic is and what a job or a career means and should be to them. Mm-hmm. So, um, and let's talk about working from home. Let's do it. Right? I think this is a really hot topic. So we'll mm-hmm. go back to um, the money and the time. And I asked you this question the other day. If you lined up 100 kids you graduated from, okay, and it's their first job, and they said, well, we're going to offer you uh, $50,000. dollars you got to come in the office every day, nine to five, mm-hmm. traditional job. Or I'm going to pay you $40,000, but you can work from home and quote unquote make your schedule. What percentage out of that hundred kids, who do you think would, what percentage do you think would take, I'll take the more money to be in the office or I'll take less money to be flexible? So I think I could totally go on a tangent about this, but I, I think the general consensus would be take the extra flexibility. Mm-hmm. But I, on paper, if you look at it and kind of take a step back from it, I don't like the idea of that. I feel like my generation, so my senior year of college was Zoom University. Zoom mm-hmm. you, everyone got used to the remote learning. And the idea behind it was like, oh, I could just sit in my living room and do class on my sit laptop. Sit in my underwear and a t-shirt. Exactly. Um, so I think anyone who was in college or maybe high school at that time. You didn't have to go to learn. Exactly. Not and that you were learning anything anyway. Now, yeah, I mean, I'm 21, 22 years old in college. I'm, I would love to just sit in my living room, maybe mm-hmm. crack open a beer and yep. just do class or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that generation, that age group, and I feel like the stigma around my generation is that they're lazy. Mm-hmm. They don't like to do stuff. They don't want to work. But I feel like we got very accustomed and almost brainwashed to the idea of, oh, I can do all my daily responsibilities right here from my living room on my laptop. Why would I have to? Yeah, what, why do I need to be anywhere at any time? Why do I have to get dressed up and drive 45 minutes mm-hmm. to go work eight hours and then drive an hour back in traffic? Yep. You know what I mean? Um, so I think the idea of remote work is like that shiny object that you can kind of just like dangle in front of their face and say, oh, you know, you can... Work from home, you know, maybe sleep an extra half hour in the morning. Uh, if you're not doing stuff, you can just kind of walk into your kitchen, mm-hmm. you know, cook your lunch. Yep. Stuff like that. I don't know. I don't, personally, I don't, I wouldn't take a significant pay cut just to work from home. Yep. Now, I would love to, you know what I mean? I would, if you told me, you know, Kyle, you can work remote, you know, you can do hybrid, come into the office every once in a while, work from home. Cool. I'm okay with that. But I wouldn't do it at the expense of mm-hmm. significantly less pay, like you know, twenty five percent less pay. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I think I have a unique stance on it, but I definitely think the root of my generation leaning towards remote work is definitely geared towards the experience with like Zoom University mm-hmm. type of thing. So that's kind of where I stand on it. Yeah, I have a interesting stance. Being, you know, and this is this is just obviously very stereotypical. Not mm. everybody is that way, of course. Yep. But it's the perception is that you know is they're going to take the easy way out. It's you mm-hmm. know, well, if I don't have to wake up, let's do that. Or I, you know, I I went to college and it was fine. I didn't need to be in person. Or why would I need to be in person to work? I can just sit here and do all my work, right? Yep. And it's there is something to say about um, how do I want to put it? Quote unquote, learning how to manage being told what to do and being set in a box. Okay. And here's what I mean by that. Um, learning how to understand and work properly under a manager that's hopefully good mm-hmm. and, and basically saying, well, no, you need to be here at this time and this is a, a responsibility. And basically, you need to learn how to adjust things around this schedule that we are going to set for you. 
Mm-hmm. And when you come in, here's going to be the expectations we need you to A, B, right? And really setting these things. To me, that subconsciously is going to teach you invaluable skills because what I always say is you learn more from people on what not to do or what you wouldn't do in the situation than you do by them telling you what to do. So for instance, if you have a manager who's a dick, Mm -hmm. okay, so you got your first job, you're 23 years old out of college and they're like, nope, you're here, uh, you know, this time, no matter what, this is it. It doesn't matter. One minute late, you're in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn more from what that manager does that you don't like or that you wouldn't want to do. If I was ever in that position, I would want my person to do this. You learn more from the no's than the yeses. Definitely. You learn more from the don'ts than the do's. Mm -hmm. And as a young man or young woman growing up, you're going to learn more about yourself on how you handle the no's and the don'ts and how you can adjust to that. Mm. And it's like little things. Okay, if this guy's a stickler for being there at 730, I'm setting my alarm 15 minutes early. And I'm getting there. As silly as that sounds. Yeah. That is actually a massive learning curve or a big accomplishment for a young person in the professional work field because life is not easy. You don't always get to make your schedule. Mm -hmm. You don't always get to do what you want to do. You don't always get to be flexible. And if you think that's the way the world is, you are in big fucking trouble. Big, 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 big trouble. Yep, yep, yep. And so to me... um. The remote aspect feeds into some of those things. Again, very stereotypical. It can really feed into the, I can do what I want when I want. Or I don't have to listen to that. Or, you know, I, no, that doesn't apply to me. I think, you know, if we're going to talk really big stereotypes, I think those are some of the problems or challenges that younger people get into when they're, quote, unquote, entering the real world. And they're just like, I can live at home with my parents until I'm 35. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to take care of myself? Yeah. I'll sleep till ten o'clock, and I'll just work later. It's just that's not the that's not the real world. Yeah, that's not how things really work. And so I think, you know, there's probably a portion of people that do work remote from home in those aspects, and they're killer. And they can manage their time, and they're great. But mm. I don't think that's the the majority of people. Yeah, I mean, I guess definitely hearing, especially that perspective, having a first job, like first, like full time career. This is your job, first job. Mm-hmm. Having it remote is almost like. Uh, yeah, are you ever like, gonna go back? Do you ever? That's not what I'm gonna, saying. Like, like, are you gonna? Why would you want to start jumping right? through these hoops to? You would probably if you got a, another opportunity that was in. You're like, ah, I don't know, man. I'm not gonna take it. I'm just cool. I'm sit, cool where yeah, I am. I'm cool with waking up at eight fifty nine. Yep. You know, clocking in, mm-hmm. walking around, taking my time, making my coffee, yep. walking around my living room, my mm-hmm. bathrobe, yep. just taking my time. You do, and I think, again, in the stereotype that breeds, I'm gonna do the least amount of possible to, to be productive enough to get by. Mm-hmm. What, what are we doing here, man? Yeah. Do you want to be a person that's going to do the least amount of possible to get by? I'll tell you what. In my past career at Sherwin-Williams, mm-hmm. I certainly did that. It wasn't good. Yeah. It wasn't good for me. I wasn't being the best person I could be. I wasn't being productive. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we all go through stints like that. But it's like, why? why what are you doing, man? What, what's the point? What, what are you mm-hmm. getting out of that? You're going to take a huge chunk of your time in your life yep. to do something. Just, I don't know, give it a shit. Give it a good try. Yeah. Um, I mean, almost to that point, though. So we're kind of talking about maybe not doing the bare minimum, but maybe less than if there was a supervisor looking mm-hmm. at your shoulder. And you can kind of take your time. Let's say you're getting the equivalent amount of work done remote that you would In person Mm -hmm. at a desk. Sure. Would that almost and you know, would that almost speak to the effect of not burning that candle as much? Because you're not, you know, waking up an hour earlier. Mm -hmm. You're not rushing around all over the place. There's not the stress and hustle and bustle of being in an office with X amount of other people and yeah, I would say be, I would say there are and jobs, I'm, and I'm not defending like no, the laziness. No, no, it, there are jobs and industries where it makes perfect sense to be mm-hmm. remote and mobile. I'll give you an instance. I have a good friend who's in the insurance business. He's been an insurance adjuster in many different shapes or forms. Mm-hmm. There's no need for him to ever go to an office. 
Absolutely no need. His job is reactionary based. He can't mm -hmm. pre-inspect something that got damaged. So he okay. is basically sitting back and waiting for issues with customers and clients that, his, that have insurance policies with his company. Mm -hmm. Okay. They call, they email, the information gets sent to him. He processes paperwork and claims. And then his job is to go out there and visit and investigate and start that process. Okay. okay. That fundamentally is the job. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to do, why would you ever need to do that in four walls? Yeah. In an office space. Yeah, you can do it from your living room. You can do it from anywhere. Mm -hmm. If anything, going to the office is going to probably make you not productive because you're wasting time to, to check. Like, that all can be done mobily, mm -hmm. quote, unquote, on the road. Yeah. Or from a home office. So for him, as long as, as, long as he is keeping up with his claims in a timely manner, closing them out, allocating the money, going through his job and checking the boxes within the standard the company has set forth, mm -hmm. he's achieving his job 100% to his ability. So yeah. being in, a, in an office or a location is in, insignificant, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. there are industries that it's completely applicable. To me, a lot of sales jobs or that are, unless you're, you're just an, a phone person, mm -hmm. those jobs really should be mobile or remote. Yeah. You know, you're, you're in the field. You're in the field. You're amongst the people doing, selling whatever, you know, selling hats, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Selling these foam tiles. You, you don't, how are you going to sell those? You're going to be on the phone. Yep. And ideally, you're probably setting up like an appointment to meet somebody. Now, maybe you have a home office, a home base. Maybe you're checking in. Maybe you're talking with a manager with questions. Most of that stuff can be done mobily. Mm -hmm. In the sales world, at the end of the day, you know, are you achieving your numbers? Are your methods there? Are we getting in front of as many people as we want? Mm -hmm. um, are we doing all the right things? That doesn't necessarily need to be done within four walls. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and I think the common theme of that is you're working specifically with clients. Mm -hmm. There's no lateral like, hey, I need to, I need to meet with so and so. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. one of my coworkers. I. Yep. It's you're working strictly with clients. almost independently. Yeah. Yeah, almost. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I can definitely see. I, I think when you're working in a management office corporate su some sort of setting, mm -hmm. if you think we're a little baby corporate company here, right? <clears throat> and you need to collaborate with your peers, to, in my opinion, to be truly productive, that has to be in person. It has to be. Yeah, I think... I think Because you and I talking right now, we could do this podcast mobily, technically. Yeah. Right? We can queue up cameras and we can sit in our underwear at the house. I have no pants on right now. Yep. And we could be doing, but it's not going to be the same because you and I chatting over Skype about, hey, Kyle, how are we going to set this podcast up? What are we going to talk about? It's not the same about you and me sitting down in person and, and going over it. It's just, it's yeah. just not. Um, I forgot where I was going with the original point. But yeah, I think like even meetings in, in Zoom mm -hmm. or Skype, whatever it is, yep. they're just not as productive it's you don't get the human aspect i feel like if you're sitting in a room with someone it's much much more different if it's necessary to like you said collaborate with yeah coworkers, peers well i think skype meetings well i had one the other day with the guy it was fine one to me whenever there's more than like three people in a skype meeting waste of time complete waste Why is of that? time because perpetually the other per people not talking are not engaged in what's going on Right. Like to me, you have a Skype meeting with like 10 people. I, I, seven of the people is. Yeah. Just kind of unengaged. Just like. completely not engaged. Huh. Where, and that's a body, you know, it's a body language thing. And I sit that's very true. relaxed all the time anyway, but mm -hmm. you know, you're on your computer, just taking it in. If you're in a room in a meeting, mm -hmm. you, you better be engaged. Otherwise, somebody be like, uh, Kyle, let's go, buddy. Get, get involved yeah. here, right? And um, I've, I heard this quote from Elon Musk, Kyle. He says he hates meetings. And any meeting that you're in, if it's longer than 10 minutes, if you feel that you do not have anything productive to add to the meeting, you are, you can voluntarily get up and leave and not say one word to anybody. Interesting. Yep. Just, so just leave. If you feel that you don't have anything productive to add to the conversation, just get not a word, leave. get up and leave. I mean, it may, like, and that's one of those things that it might seem rude. You might seem like a yep, like no rudeness. Yep. If 
if someone did that. But if there's a full understanding that like, hey, you could be using this time to yeah. something completely different. Yep. Ten times, a hundred times more mm-hmm. productive than just sitting there and kind of zoning out in a meeting you can't contribute to. Yep. You're like, why am I here? What yeah. am I doing here? And so let's talk about corporate burnout. Okay. Okay. So my wife worked for a large corporate toy company locally. Anybody might be able to figure that out. Uh, and she did fantastic work there, I don't know, 10 years. But the structure of that place was bananas. And what it was was meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting all day. Mm-hmm. Email after email after email. And she would come home and go, I didn't have a chance to actually do any of my real work today and would work on the computer. And this is when we were young and didn't have any kids. Would work, you know, we'd eat dinner at 6 or 6.30 and she would work from 7 to 11 o'clock. Do this like three nights a week. Jeez. And so what I would say, if we go back to our last episode, what I would say is taking those big bites, to me, one of two things. Either the complete structure is broken. Oh, right? for sure. Complete structure is broken. You're either not delegating your tasks properly or you are simply just burning the candle on both ends. Yeah. Right? You are continuing to, to work, 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 work. You know, she, that worked for her and she excelled and she did great. We didn't have any kids. It was like, no big deal, whatever. You work as much as you want. But mm-hmm. that that was not sustainable. Oh, yeah. She no. can't, she couldn't do that now. Yeah, especially right? with, the, with the kids. Completely yeah. unsustainable. Mm-hmm. And when you look back in that corporate setting, what they, what that organization does is inundate you with meetings that take up time that you're obviously ideally and really not productive in. Mm-hmm. And you actually don't have any time throughout your standard day to do your physical job. You can't do your job. Yeah. So what if I was like, Kyle, I needed you to edit videos and produce content. That is your job. Mm-hmm. But you're here for eight hours a day. Seven of those, I need you to be in a meeting. How the hell are you supposed to edit the videos and put the content out? Yeah. Well, I mean, that also, that also comes out to five hours a week. It doesn't make any sense. And in your wife's situation, um, so... Let me get this straight. So she was meetings all day and then would go home and work 7 to 11 to like actually to do yeah, to the do stuff. the tasks that were on her list. So if let's let's call it the Elon Musk rule. Mm-hmm. Let's say that applied. Yep. And she had, you know, 6 hour long meetings in a day. Mm-hmm. If she walked out 20 minutes in and said, you know, whether this meeting's pointless, this is I'm all set, like all right, I've said what I need to say. I've, yeah, I've My people are on the same out. page. And then they would have a meeting to follow up the meeting to make sure everybody's on the same page. That all right, so yeah, so that's just redundant. A that's, recap meeting to say, hey, do we all agree with step one, two, three, four, and five? And that would be an hour conversation. Jeez. But so imagine she applied the Elon Musk rule, mm-hmm. or I guess the company applied the Elon Musk rule, and she walked out 20, 30 minutes in. Yep. That's that 7 to 11 time window just got pushed into the yep. 9 to 5 time window uh-huh. and now you have that work-life balance. Yep. Unfortunately, and I've also said, fortunately, I've never had to experience that. Obviously, I've never worked in like for like a big mm-hmm. corporate company, like Fortune 500 company. I've never had to deal with the idea of corporate burnout. Mm-hmm. But it seems like a living hell. It's bananas. Yeah. So yeah. you've worked for a large company. Uh-huh. Have you experienced something like that? Uh, I would say no, because when I was younger, I, um, I didn't have the drive that I have now, if I'm being honest with you. Okay. Um, and you could, because it's also because I was a, a sales rep though. You okay. know, I didn't work in a corporate, I think if I worked in the company, I worked in a corporate structure, like mm-hmm. physically in an office corporate structure, it absolutely would have happened. Yeah. But, um, you know, I was able to base, you know, I could turn my phone off. Okay. I just, I'll just, I just won't pick up the phone. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you're most, you were, if I'm not mistaken, you were mostly just kind of out driving around store yeah. to store, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, okay. okay. I mean, somebody has calls me at 7 o'clock. I just don't pick up the phone. I'll get back to you tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, so I think those corporate structures and burnouts are a lot, like, heavy of, like, the office, um, in person, my team. Everybody's there. Those, th- it just, it never stops. It never, ever stops. There is no separation. There is no turn yeah. off. It's, you know, she would get emails from her bosses at two thirty in the morning. Jesus. Like and I'm talking, Kyle. I'm talking like, <clears throat> yeah, like full, like an email that took like an hour to to draft. Jeez. Boom, boom, point, 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 point. Meeting, 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 meeting. This, this, this at like two thirty in the morning. That's not. It just never turns off. Yeah. And I just don't think it's sustainable. I really, really don't. No, definitely not. I mean, especially. Especially now when you guys are 
raising a family. Mm-hmm. Like it's just un it's not feasible. Yeah. It's not realistic. Yep. To and it, uh, back to the original point, you're you're working eight hours a day. Where are you gonna have time to you know, spend the time that you actually want to spend that you don't do for a living. You like I want to go be, I want to go home, I wanna eat dinner, I wanna hang out, I wanna watch Netflix for an hour or two. Mm-hmm. You don't have that when you're working nine to five and then yeah. you have, you know, stacks and stacks of work to do that you need to get done before you go back in at nine the next morning. Mm-hmm. It's so, I mean, like I said, I'm fortunate. I've never had to experience it. Hopefully I never will, but that just, it doesn't seem feasible. And that's like, I feel like is the epitome of burning the candle from both ends. Yeah. And I think, it, uh, so I think the work-life balance and I think happiness that's what i really i, I yep. think if you want to get the most out of your people ideally you're paying them a fair dollar amount mm. that they're happy with right or they feel they're earning as much as they can that's kind of number one but number two is just like they got to be in a good mood you got to be happy right we all have bad days but mm-hmm. like if they can go home and they don't feel stressed out or that they're overworked or they've got more stuff to do then ideally they can be good with their husband and wife and their kids and then come in the next morning and feel in a good mood and they can do their job and when their job's done they can go home like yep. it's I really like I it's not easy to do it's like very intangible but like Mark and I want to create a happy easy environment to work in mm-hmm. that when our job is done for the day we can go home hopefully go home early yep and you guys can do what you want to do and then we come back like yeah try, like re- try to really really simplify it and honestly tip of the cap because I feel like you guys do do a very good job of that um, I meant we were talking the other day about how like, you know, if so and so needs to go pick up their kids, they need mm-hmm. to leave a half hour earlier. You know, someone has a family member who has you know a doctor's appointment. You got to bring them to. Or yep. So like anything like that, it's very. You guys are very flexible and um, not not laissez faire, but very easygoing about it. Well, here's why I think that I'm gonna be selfish and take some credit for that. Mm. I learned. What I wouldn't want my boss or manager to do. Okay. To me. Because they did it to me. Yeah. And I always said to myself, if I if I get the opportunity to be in a position where I'm going to be leading or managing people within a company, I would never want somebody to do that to me. I would never mm-hmm. want to be able to go into my office and say, hey, Kyle, you know, my son's got uh, an appointment today at 3 o'clock. I couldn't reschedule and I'd like to see if I could leave at 2 to get there. Mm-hmm. And for them to say... John, too bad. You know the, the the day ends at four. I don't give a shit about you, kid, man. We need you to produce for us. Yeah. How would you feel? Well, yeah, I feel like I feel like the corporate burnout would come a little, a little sooner because you don't have that yep. that necessary balance. I think it's more so just you and Mark looking at everyone and acknowledging like these people are human. They yeah. have everyday shit going on. Yep. You know what I mean? I feel like. And that's, I mean, that's a testament to the way you guys run the company. So, I mean, to be And I feel, of course, like, you know, if somebody's abusing it, that's differently. But I don't, I I think if you set that up, they won't abuse it because they value it. Mm -hmm. It's literally the guys, you know, hey, John, on Thursday, you know, they they almost really tell me because I don't say no. Right? So, you know, I I, got to leave early. Is that, you know, and obviously if something's really important, we'll see what we have to do. But like 99% of the time, it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, if that's. You know, you're. I would say you're asking for a reason. Mm. I, if, if I feel you're asking to go to the beach, no. <laughs> the answer is no, you're not going to the beach, man. Yeah. But you're asking because it's important enough for you to ask to get out of work early mm. or to come, whatever it is, for a particular reason. Yeah. So, like, why, even if it's not convenient for us or maybe even it puts a shorthand, like, why am I, what am I going to say no for? And then I'm going to piss you off and you're going to be grumpy yeah. for a week and a half and you're going to come into work and be like, oh, this place sucks. Yeah. No. It's not, that's not worth it. I want you to be happy and healthy. If you mm-hmm. got to leave early, pick up your kid. Shit happens, man. Because mm-hmm. you know what? I want to do the same thing. And I wouldn't do yeah. it. I wouldn't leave early and tell you guys you got to stay late. Mm-hmm. Like that's not just, that's not the right thing to do. So I learned by the, the do's and the don'ts and the no's mm-hmm. on what, how we want to do it. I, th- I think that's just the easiest way to do it. Yeah, I think it's a lot of just kind of you putting yourself in mm-hmm. someone else's shoes. Like, oh, well, if I had, you know, a doctor's appointment or, you know, I had to pick my son up from school. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just what would I want 
my manager to yeah. allow and not allow. So I, think I want him to maybe ask a question or two and then say, okay, yeah. cool, man. Go do it. I think it's the human aspect. It's just mm-hmm. that, um, you know, some, some people might not get at certain, certain jobs. Yes. So I think that is, um, like I said, just not burning the candle at both ends, not wearing yourself thin and being able to get the stuff you need to get done outside of work. Mm-hmm. So you can come into work, kind of put your best foot forward and just not be pissed off about other stuff you can't control while you're at work. I agree a thousand percent, Kyle. I say, well, any, any other I topics on your phone? I was going to say, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I don't. Let's wrap it up right Let's there. Let's do it. Hope everybody enjoyed this episode. We're going to have plenty more like this. Stay tuned for the Royal Flush Podcast. Have a great rest of your day.